everyone. Welcome back to the next installment in our breast cancer survivorship series. And today we are talking about joint pain. And this is something that we'll get into, but joint pain is really, really common, very problematic, very, you know, impactful on quality of life. So definitely something we need to address. If you've missed the prior conversations, we've had episodes on hot flashes, as well as skin, hair and beauty. And, and both of those are up on YouTube and definitely check them out. Um, you can also listen to the hot flashes and the joint pain one as podcasts over on the interlude podcast. So whatever is the best way for you to get this information. It is here for you in all sorts of different ways. Let's get into it. What is joint pain? So joint pain, also known as arthralgias, and you might see it referred to it that way. Joint pain is a common side effect from many cancer treatments. And we typically in breast cancer think of joint pain as coming from aromatase inhibitors, which we use for estrogen receptor positive breast cancer, but they can also be caused um, by other cancer treatments and so not just aromatase inhibitors, as well as from unrelated causes such as osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. And a point that I like to make is that sometimes you may have mild osteoarthritis and then you, let's say, get put on an aromatase inhibitor or chemotherapy and then together it's a lot, uh, you know, it's kind of cumulative and the symptoms get worse. So just kind of keeping in mind all the different components. Now, joint pain can occur throughout the body. We can see it in our hands, our feet, knees, hips, shoulders, lower back and spine. So all of our it can affect quality of life. It can worsen other symptoms or side effects, and it can be mild or severe and really occurs on a spectrum. It can be associated not just with pain, but with limited range of movement, joint stiffness, joint swelling or tenderness, redness or warmth at a joint. And so for some people, um, their joint pain manifests as they wake up, they get out of bed, they're a little bit stiff. And they, as they start to move around through the day, they kind of feel okay and they, they don't feel like they're impaired in terms of quality of life, in terms of movement. Whereas on the other side of the spectrum, people who are not able to move, they're not able to walk, they're not able to go up a set of stairs because of that's how severe the symptoms are for them. Now, as we previously had in our conversation with hot flashes, we know that there are going to be both non-pharmacologic options as well as pharmacologic options for joint pain. And so before we just jump to pain medications, there's a lot of other things that we can do. And so I'm gonna talk first about the non-medication options. And number one is gonna be physical activity. This is both aerobic and strength training. And I know it can be hard if you have a lot of pain and discomfort, especially if moving just seems so daunting because you're in so much pain. But I would start with low impact in a few minutes at a time. What do I mean by that? I tell my patients, go down to the mailbox and come back. That's five minutes, right? That's not, that may be a lot if you're in so much pain that you're not used to doing that. Low impact is great. This is not the time to start running. If you're having a lot of discomfort and you're not a runner, um, swimming can be really, really helpful because that is so low impact. Um, gentle yoga, even chair yoga is a great, great resource for low impact activity. And the idea is just to start to increase that movement, that flexibility. Um, and so things don't feel as stiff. Now, if you're kind of on the milder end of it, then you might be able to do high impact, high intensity training. So it really is knowing your body, knowing where you're starting out from and, um, and, and going from there. Heat or cold can work. Um, if a lot of times they get asked about infrared saunas, and I think that they, and we know they can be really helpful, but if you are using an infrared sauna, you definitely want to make sure that you're monitoring for swelling. If you have a history of breast cancer and are at risk for lymphedema, already have lymphedema. So you wanna to talk to your doctor before using a sauna. And this is something that I also actually recommend talking to your breast surgeon about in addition to the medical oncologist, because they are the ones who did the surgery. They kind of know where things stand with your lymphedema a little bit better. Um, if you work with a lymphedema therapist, that's also a great person to reach out to and to ask. Massage can be really helpful. And there are a lot of programs out of cancer centers that have discounted massage services for patients. So I would absolutely ask about that. Acupuncture, I will say I personally have not had acupuncture, but the benefits of acupuncture, I think are really understated. It is a non-medication option and it can be so helpful and actually can help with things like hot flashes too. And so 
when you go for acupuncture, you know, ask around, get some referrals. Some um, acupuncturists are kind of more specialized in treating symptoms of cancer medications and cancer pain. And, you know, tell them where, what you're struggling with and they can kind of tailor the, the acupuncture accordingly. Referral to physical medicine and rehabilitation and or physical therapy. This is a big one. And physical medicine and rehabilitation is, um, you know, a set of specialized doctors that have special specific training in, you know, assessing your pain, assessing discomfort and figuring out um, what's next. Do you need physical therapy? Do you need more intervention, you know, medications and things like that. So PM and R physiatrists, as they're known, really a fantastic tool. And then physical therapy and even occupational therapy, which is not on here. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I had Scott Capoza on the podcast. Sorry, I don't know what's going on here. One second. We had Scott on, and Scott is a physical therapy physical therapist, and he specializes in onco oncologic physical therapy. And that episode was really helpful because he talked about the cancer survivorship clinic that he runs. He talks about who should see a physical therapist, what an assessment and treatment plan looks like, his some of the movements that he recommends to patients. Um, and so I think that really I. I I am really trying to think about PT for my patients and really keep that at front of mind. And I urge you, if you're listening to this, and if you think you're hearing of this and you're saying, you know, I think that I may benefit, I would talk to your oncologist. I think what is a great use for physical therapy is if people are having joint pain and neuropathy, um, kind of work, you know, intermixing together, especially after chemotherapy, and that can impact your gait your balance, maybe you're having higher increase of falls. So all of those things um, together can really make either a referral to PT or physiatry very, very helpful. And then finally, weight loss. And, you know, again, weight is not the end all be all, neither is BMI, but if we are carrying around more weight, sometimes that it does increase the risk of arthritis and increases pain. And so that's something that can be helpful. And this is where working with a registered dietitian um, can also add to the, you know, to helping with weight loss. So that's our non-pharmacologic options. Next, we go to pharmacologic options for joint pain. Now, there are a lot of different options for medications. Um, <clears throat> obviously, we kind of think always about Tylenol, NSAIDs, like ibuprofen, Advil. Um, you know, we try to be careful with those because remember, too much of that can impact the liver with Tylenol, too much of the NSAIDs can impact the kidney, it can impact platelet counts, it cause reflux, ulcers. So you definitely want to be, be careful. I don't love the idea of taking, you know, let me, me giving you, let's say, you know, rheumatase inhibitor for breast cancer, and now you're taking ibuprofen every three hours or four hours, just so you can continue to take the aromatase inhibitors. I feel like there is a better way for us to manage that. Um, in addition to Tylenol and Advil, we've got our serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, also known as SNRIs. These are antidepressants. The top two here are venlafaxine, known as Effexor, and that can help not only with joint pain, but with hot flashes, or duloxetine, also known as Cymbalta, and that can help in addition to joint pain. It can also help with uh, neuropathy, especially chemotherapy induced neuropathy. And a point that I really like to make is sometimes people will say, well, why do I need an antidepressant? I am not depressed. Um, and the reason is that, you know, if you're not depressed, then it's not going to all of a sudden make you so much happier. Um, but, you know, a lot of times people kind of take it and they go, oh, you know what, my mood's a little bit better. And, and that's been helpful. So just kind of putting that out there. Um, tricyclic antidepressants such as amitriptyline are an option. Anticonvulsant drugs. I know that kind of sounds scary, but that's your gabapentin. That's just the ca category that they're in. Gabapentin or pregabalin, which is also known as Lyrica, can really help. Um, Tylenol, we said, COX-2 inhibitors like Celebrex and muscle relaxants. And I think the key is not to throw all these medications at a person, um, but to say that there are options that are beyond Tylenol and Advil, and it really takes a lot of trial and error to figure out what's going to be right for you. Now, here's 
point. This is where your oncologist may not be the right person to manage that. Um, this is where working with pain management, I think is really, really useful. This is where working with physical medicine and rehabilitation can be really useful because the idea is that you can't get everything from one person. Um, and I, as an oncologist, you know, I, I, I think you can tell me you're having joint pain. You know, we have questions that we can ask, but I, I'm not maybe assessing it the same way. And I know I'm not assessing it the same way, such as physiatry or pain management. And so we should all work together as a team to help figure out what's going to be the right thing for you. So if you're having joint pain, what I would recommend is talking to your oncologist and saying, hey, do you think that I would benefit from physical therapy, from pain management? And as I'm presenting this, and as I'm saying, talking about this, it's a reminder to myself also to just really make sure that I'm talking to my patients about it and that I'm thinking about it. Do we use a lot of medications for joint pain? And, you know, look, while sometimes medications can definitely be helpful, like we just talked about, I do think it's important to start with non-pharmacologic options first, because sometimes, you know, things like acupuncture, massage can really help. But definitely we will use prescription medications in some situations. As I talked about, it's really important to be mindful about how much over-the-counter pain medication someone is taking. You know, we want to monitor that dose of the Tylenol of Advil. And if you're on an aromatase inhibitor for breast cancer and you are experiencing joint pain, sorry about that little phone ringing. Um, so what I was saying was that if you are on an aromatase inhibitor for breast cancer and are experiencing joint pain, sometimes changing to a different aromatase inhibitor or to tamoxifen can help. Um, so that's always a possibility as well for our patients. What about supplements? So number one is omega-3 fatty acids. This study was published in 2018 and it looked at using omega-3 fatty acids as a supplement for obese breast cancer patients with aromatase inhibitor-related arthralgias. Remember I said arthralgias or joint pain. This was published in Breast Cancer Research and Treatment, and what their conclusion was was that in obese breast cancer patients, omega-3 fatty acid use was associated with significantly reduced arthralgias from aromatase inhibitors compared to placebo. So if you are on an AI and you're having joint pain and by BMI standards, and look, I know BMI is not the best, but that's what we're using. If by BMI standards, you are obese, then you may benefit from omega-3 fatty acids. This, what they used was 3.3 grams per day. And if you're watching this on the YouTube, um, I have the dosing there, um, but it was a combination of EPA and DHA. Um, and what they use for placebo, was a soybean corn oil blend. So they show that the omega-3 fatty acids really reduce joint pain. And that's an option. And I talk to a lot of my patients about this as a potential supplement to see if it helps them. Alternatively, you can increase your omega-3 fatty acids in the diet. And I think this is great for everyone to do. Um, fish and seafood is a good source. So cold water fatty fish, such as salmon, mackerel, tuna, herring, and sardines, um, nuts and seeds, especially if you're going more plant-based vegan, flaxseed, chia seed, walnuts, plant oils, such as flaxseed oil or soybean oil, and fortified foods. So a lot of our foods like eggs, yogurt, soy beverages, and milk are actually fortified in some cases with omega-3 fatty acids. What about glucosamine, chondroitin, and turmeric? Now, glucosamine and chondroitin are both structural components of cartilage, and that's what cushions the joints. And it's produced naturally in the body, but it also is available as dietary supplements. Now, there are some studies that say that they may improve joint pain, including joint pain from aromatase inhibitors. And an important point is that they do not increase estradiol levels. So we're always, you know, obviously keeping that in mind. Um, and I love to recommend this for patients. I think a lot of people have found it helpful for that mild joint pain. So I have found anecdotally that it really doesn't work that well if you have severe joint pain, but if you've got mild like stiffness in the morning that gets better, then the glucosamine chondroitin can be quite, quite helpful. And then um, turmeric can also relieve arthritis symptoms in some patients. Again, I see that more on the milder side. There is an ongoing study of turmeric um, of its impact on aromatase inhibitor related arthralgias. And so I love to see, I love seeing that we have 
we're start, starting starting to study these supplements, um, that we have data that you know we can point to things to say, look, this has been looked at and this can help you. Um, and I, I think that's really important. A key point is that you cannot take turmeric supplement if you're on tamoxifen. Personally, I am okay with my patients incorporating turmeric into their foods, um, but I always ask you to speak with your doctor about what they feel for you, but definitely not the supplement. Okay. What about testosterone for joint pain? And I talked about this a little bit in the hot flash episode as, uh, discussion as well. Um, and so testosterone, there was a study looked at whether testosterone can help postmenopausal women with aromatase inhibitor induced arthralgias. And what it showed was whether you gave testosterone as a topical gel or as a pellet underneath the skin, there was no significant improvement in musculoskeletal symptoms from aromatase inhibitors. So really this kind of, again, further supports are not currently using testosterone for symptom management from breast cancer. Again, things may change, you know, things um, are always being studied and things are always evolving. So in conclusion, um, both hot flashes and joint pain are very common side effects of cancer treatment. And I know a lot of the stuff that we focused on with breast cancer was talking about the aromatase inhibitors because that's where kind of a lot of the, the research is. Um, but you know, remember that joint pain can come from a number of factors. And again, here we're focusing on this, this really conversation is on breast cancer survivorship. So that's why I'm not going too much into joint pain from chemotherapy. And when we think about kind of breast cancer survivorship, the aromatase inhibitors are what most often cause joint pain rather than things like, you know, Herceptin and Progetta, which people take for a year and things like that. Um, and again, survivorship, we're thinking more long-term. As we talked about, there are a number of non-pharmacologic and pharmacologic options available. Talk to your doctor about what is going to be right for you move your body if you can. I know that it is hard. And I will say too that, you know, maybe right after you are finished active treatment, you're entering that survivorship period. It just seems really daunting, but just because it seems daunting now, it doesn't mean that it will seem daunting six months from now. And it doesn't mean that the joint pain that you have now is going to persist six months down the road. Um, and some supplements can be beneficial while others have not shown efficacy. So you know, don't believe everything you see online or hear about what works for one person may or may not work for you. But if it's safe, I always think it's okay to try. So talk to your doctor. Um, don't be afraid to ask about supplements and vitamins that you hear about or see to see if that's something that's going to feel right for you. And the first question with any of those things are, is it safe? And then if it's safe is, well, is there going to be a benefit or is it okay if I, if I try this? Thank you. Um, don't forget to sign up for our next session, and that's going to be on January 25th, 2023, coming up in about two weeks, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And this one is on nutrition and supplements. Um, we've covered a lot of supplements so far. We talked about hot flashes and joint pain, but believe it or not, there is a ton more um, that I think will, will come up. Things like collagen peptides is a big one. So we're going to be talking about mel you know, melatonin, vitamin D. We're going to talk about all of those things. Um, so if you want to sign up for that, that's going to be valleyhealth.com slash events. We're going to do a Q&A there as well. So I think it's going to be great. Um, and so I hope, I hope to see as many of you there as I can. And again, that'll be live. If you miss it, it'll be uploaded um, on YouTube, just like this one is and on the podcast as well. Have a great rest of your day and I'll talk to all of you soon.